and others just defy logic. Are curses real? In Britain, a mysterious painting is blamed for a string of deadly house fires. But the one link between them all was the crying boy. Is it the work of a supernatural arsonist? 1985, Rotherham, England. A devastating house fire destroys the home of Ron and Mary Hall. The story was investigated by Kelvin McKenzie, former editor of The Sun, Britain's highest selling newspaper. There had been a fire in this terraced house, a chip pan fire. It burned down most of the house. But this is no ordinary blaze. Firefighters make a bizarre discovery in the ruins. There was a picture, an artist's picture, of a crying boy. And despite everything else going up in flames, it survived. How could a painting be immune to fire? As he works on the story, Mackenzie makes a startling discovery. This is no isolated incident. Firefighters have come across the crying boy before, in the ruins of dozens of destroyed homes. There was a fire officer in the Rotherham area who claimed to have logged 50 separate examples of houses which had the crying boy on the wall having some kind of fire. The more the editor learns, the stranger the story becomes. The Crying Boy was painted in Madrid in 1969 by a little-known Spanish artist, Bruno Amadio. Cheap reproductions were sold widely in Britain during the 1960s and 70s. But the house fires are the first time it's been linked to tragedy. There's a sense that out there there is a curse of the Crying Boy. Mackenzie isn't prepared for the reaction. The paper is inundated with stories of the crying boy. Mrs. Jones says her place burnt down in Cornwall. The White family in Harrogate in Yorkshire, their place went. I was absolutely gobsmacked, to be truthful, at the huge avalanche of stuff that started coming our way. These new stories raise an alarming possibility. The crying boy isn't just surviving fires. It's starting. The one link between them all was the crying boy. As fear grows over the threat posed by the picture, Mackenzie launches a campaign to destroy every last copy of it. Save your house. Send us that crying boy art, and we will destroy it for you before it destroys you. We were literally swamped by it. So we then took all the work, we stuck it up together, made a bonfire, lit it, up it all goes. And that way, we'd actually taken away the curse from them. Is the curse real? Can a painting actually cause house fires? This is the stuff of nightmares, isn't it? I mean, you hang a painting in your house, and the next thing you know, it's burned to the ground. Could a painting have... weird or what but what i want to know is who is this boy and why is he so sad can anyone smell something oberon zell is the co-founder of the church of all worlds i would say that the curse of the crying boy is a really genuine modern curse zell is not only sure that curses exist but that they take different forms the curse of the crying boy is what we call an object curse that's a curse that is associated with a material object of some sort as opposed to one that's put out upon a person or a family according to Zell some of history's most infamous hexes were actually object curses you know the curse of the mummy's tomb these are the kind of things which don't involve somebody deliberately laying a spell but misfortune is associated with them but if the crying boy is an object of misfortune, where did the evil come from? 
Everything that we are, everything we do, everything we think is stories. So the stories themselves is what has the power. A curse, like a blessing, is a story. And the story acquires its power depending on how many people uh, embrace it and believe in it and hold to it. The curse of the crying boy has acquired an enormous amount of power because it's become a legend that people believe in. And the more people believe in it, the stronger it gets. For Zell, it's simple. We need look no further than the boy who is staring out at us. But who was he? And why was he crying? He had been an orphan whose parents had died in a fire, and that's why he was sad and, and struck dumb. Living in Madrid in 1969, the mute and homeless boy was found wandering the streets by the artist, who was so struck by his grief he decided to paint him. Just a few days later, his studio mysteriously burned down. He accused the child of having started the fire, and the child fled. Why? Would a mute child commit arson? Zell's explanation? Because he was a fire starter. A fire starter is someone who has a pyrotechnic ability to create fires. Not necessarily intentionally, although that may be too. But it's a psychic phenomenon like telepathy and clairvoyance and such. But it can never be proved. Tragically, the orphan boy was apparently killed in a car accident years later. But some believe his ability to start fires with his mind lived on in the painting. Could the crying boy be the carrier of an object curse? And is the fact that I'm talking about it actually making the problem worse? Or could there be a rational explanation? Mechanical engineer Michael Goliner studies fire and combustion at the University of California, San Diego.